Kalos is back from Memphis. He's joining us here in the Washington Broadcast Center. We're going to reveal uh, the results from our exclusive CCTV America opinion poll, give you an idea of what Americans think about this issue. Right now, the minimum wage is set at $7.25 an hour. Americans say the minimum wage should really be $9.81 an hour. That's an increase of about 35 percent. But the question is, when you look at uh, somebody like Larika Harris, mm -hmm. who's really struggling to get by, she says $15, Foster says $15, even a 35 percent bump, would that be enough? I mean, would it help? Obviously, it would help some, one, one would think. Well, if you take her circumstance, it's certainly going to help her somewhat, because she said she makes about $350 every two weeks, and that's working almost 40 hours. So that's basically enough. Her rent's $349 and the rest of the amount goes for her bills, very little left over for anything. Her car's in the shop, she can't get that out. So if you think about in increasing her pay 35%, that's significant. If someone bumped your pay up 35% or anybody else's pay, it would, it would greatly influence the way you live. So it would help her get out of the projects. And when you heard her talk about, she doesn't want to be that statistic. That's one thing that really came through in talking to her. She's heartbroken, she's in that position, she works hard, she works basically around the clock, taking care of her kids during the day, work at night, and there are people across the country doing this. So a minimum wage increase, one thinks is coming, just how much, and it's not uniform across this country. Tennessee and several other states don't have a minimum wage at all. Mm -hmm. People get paid whatever they want. Other states pay above the federal minimum wage. So it's it's really catch as catch can. It's, yeah, it's happenstance. Well, let's take a little bit a uh, little bit closer look at this poll. Uh, we broke it down, the data by age. Uh, you can see that younger Americans think the minimum wage should be higher than those who are older. More of them put the target somewhere around $10 an hour than their older counterparts. Um, there's also a difference in terms of where people live. Those in the city actually think the minimum wage should be higher. That's different from those who live in rural areas. And so one would ask, why is that? And um, why do we see a difference, a disparity? Well, I think that's uh, almost kind of obvious. If you live in a city, you're going to have to pay a lot more money for, for any kind of quality of life, where if you live in a very rural area in this country, uh, you can get by on significantly less money. If you look at an apartment in Manhattan or San Francisco or here in Washington, D.C., a one-bedroom apartment could easily cost someone close to $2,000 a month. People are probably paying one-fourth of that in other parts of the country. So certainly they're going to look at a minimum wage uh, much differently. But it's going to be interesting as Tuesday's election comes by, because if the pundits are right and the power structure changes here in Washington and Republicans basically been trying to dig their heels in uh, in terms of raising the minimum wage, uh, we could see this becoming a significant issue as the haves and the have-nots continue to have this gap that just yes, grows. Huge separation. But you wonder about a woman like that who's working, working, working all the time. Does she even have time to go and vote? Yeah. I, you know, in talking to a lot of people, they're so fed up with it. Uh, they're fed up with Washington. They're just looking beyond it. Statistics show about 38 percent of the people are going to vote in a midterm election. When so much is at stake, you would hope more people would go out, but history shows us, sadly, it's probably not going to be that way. All right, Sean, thanks so much. It's been a great series. We're looking forward to more. Uh, let's take a little bit closer look at the results from our CCTV America opinion poll. Half of Americans want the minimum wage somewhere between 9 and $15 per hour. Another one in five wants it even higher than that. Still, people like Dr. Randy Albada thinks that uh, the U.S. Congress is unlikely to make any of that happen. I spoke to the economics professor from her perch at a university in Boston, Massachusetts, and I asked her why. Well, I think part of it's because of the interests they think they represent. I mean, although the poll you just presented is very interesting, and it's consistent with other polls, and it's actually consistent with when, when the vote comes up in states, people actually vote for the minimum wage. So it's, it's an interesting, it's actually a curious um, uh, phenomena, and in part I think they're driven by very large uh, lobbyists that even some of those lobbyists don't represent some of their business interests. But um, it seems to be just a political sticky point. And uh, if they indexed it to inflation, we wouldn't have to do this. Uh, it, only can, it can only change at the, at the national level with legislative uh, um, authority. But, but let me ask you this. Uh, our poll also showed people making more than $100,000 per year actually support a higher minimum wage than those that earn less, uh, which I, I think kind of jumped out at us. Why might that be? Well, I th I, maybe there's a sense, increasing sense of, of some of the damage that uh, inequality seems to be doing in the United States. There seems to be more press on it and more concern about 
very large levels of inequality in terms of educational outcomes, health outcomes, all sorts of other things that we're seeing increasingly that inequality is actually not good for economic growth. So, you know, I, I can't get in the heads of people with income over $100,000, but, but I think there's a growing sense generally that uh, we're, we're becoming a more unequal society, one with less mobility, and that lifting the bottom may in fact be a, a small remedy for that. If the minimum wage were to be increased, how might that impact uh, the ability of the United States to stay competitive in the world? Um, we hear about all these other nations where workers are making much less. Well, yes, there are workers making much less around uh, in, in uh, what we would call third world countries. But if we compare ourselves to any of, of countries that have the standard of living close to the United States, the minimum wage is much, much higher. What we're talking about is a group of people who, who earn low wages, but, um, uh, but again, as I said, it's largely in services. And those services, food services in particular, uh, and, and retail clerks, those jobs are very, very hard to transplant somewhere else. So in terms of, of any kind of outside competition or outsourcing minimum wage jobs, there's very little to worry about. You were talking about uh, people in the service industry. I was at a breakfast earlier this week where a woman, uh, a single mom, raised her child, working in the service yep. industry, uh, making virtually nothing, uh, and then now, uh, you know, after being about 30, 40 years into it, cast aside, they can find someone younger. She's having a difficult time yep. finding affordable housing. How do we break this, uh, this chain of poverty that seems to be out there if there isn't some infusion of cash to try and help these people up? Right. I, I think that there's, it's a multi-pronged um, approach. And increasing the minimum wage is one prong of that. That is, that's, that's the employment part. That's the earnings part. That's, that's the income part. But for the single mom you talk about, one of her biggest expenses, or two of her biggest expenses, are probably housing and also help with taking care of children. And this is another case in which the U U.S. falls flat um, uh, compared to most of our competitors in terms of providing any forms of assistance for early, early childhood and care, for after-school programs. Even for higher education, we, we lag behind most of our industrial counterparts. So, so it's, it's in the sense of, of helping to pay for some expenses, but also lifting income. And, and particularly for parents, and particularly for single parents, the cost of raising children is expensive, but all of us benefit when they do it well.